starting up as we're winding up um, with a discussion out of the last lecture we talked about money and cities um, uh, money as the blood of cities money as an invention out of cities the campus of monasteries existed but then the campus as a secular place of knowledge um, developing in Bologna, University of Paris, about a thousand year old, years old, now coming to a screaming halt under a number of perfect storms, uh, the outbreak of COVID and the acceptance of the Zoom culture being a large part of that. Another is the untenable and ungainly uh, cost to these places propelled by this so-called one of the forces student loaning system so what is planned for you in the city what you've gone outside of the city to return to the city to get your great job to have an affordable place to um a uh, spiffy apartment to meet lovers to have a good time with friends to maybe marry that lover and have babies with that person um to raise the babies in cities with reasonable rent we see this cascading aspects of entitlements what are you entitled uh, a, a, a well-tuned um, health system a um, uh, number of these things so this is an interesting not kind of facile kind of technocratic view of uh, from this firm PSFK labs on uh, I think it's 2015 so it's a little late on what work is on-demand staffing collision collusion improvised workplace living knowledge all these touchy-feely things which to me basically signal the gig economy that the the system is flattening we mentioned um, in the last lecture a metaphor of the city as a monster the city is an eating entity uh, uh, corrosive um, devours its flesh within its system, hopes and dreams. Certainly there have been many novels, books, movies um, to that extent. Um, uh, I think recently Berlin Babylon talks very structurally about what Berlin was in the Weimar period, a place of liberality, um, danger, conflict between uh, communists and centrists and then the Nazi center. So very good chronicle chess game as it were on these social forces um, but we have this aspect we have uh, this kind of shoot from the hip corporate sort of report on what what you should be looking for what what you should be training in not plumbing not car mechanics um, not even um, the hard sciences also in this talk we'll trying to understand the feedback loops, the, the, the logic traps of saying STEM culture is good because we need it, right? Um, uh, hearken to um, a discussion, hopefully, of some of the major theorists, uh, non-systematized theorists of the 19th century who saw the quantification and the exploitation through quantification of the human soul as um, reprehensible, coming out of Immanuel Kant's uh, mod deontological modernity into um, wh wh where where does the where do, where's the boots hitting? Where are the boots hitting the ground? Um, Nietzsche, Freud, Marx, Kierkegaard, on up into the the cataclysms of the mid-century the 40s Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir these people saying what if we have only free will what if the city is a monster consuming monster eating us what what do our choices consist of and I think this is very pertinent in the internet age and social, social media age where we attend attempt to medicalize morality and escape and and dodge the responsibilities that come with freedom so what are our freedoms in the precariat gig economy with no security from above health plans insurance um, uh, uh, pensions 
other things. We're supposed to take care of that ourselves. And below, our health, our deteriorating um, climates, um, physical analog dangers. Where, where are we as the responsible, um, as the existentialist would say, authentic human being? Um, I don't think this document is very authentic, but it gives kind of a facile um, look about improvised workplace, living knowledge, constant learning, uh, going to college. We can't afford to go to college forever. Um, what is the workplace? Empowered culture, agile workplace, all of these, these um, adjectives that are supposed to wipe away any um, c critical concern about what these things are. Intuitive connections, social workflow, contextual. But we do see this in the current culture of the, of the tech startup. Uh, learning by doing, duh. Um, interactive Facebook connects people, the use of um, the use of social media as a way of aggre uh, aggregating bodies, energies, desires, skills, marketplace, uh, very facile in its description of these places, personages who've done this, career matchmaking, matchmaking the millennial with the career of their dream for however long the gig economy lasts. Um, we see a floating world. We see, as Berardi said, the semi-capitalism of now equating language itself to values, quantifiable values, and therefore humans who use that language become quantifiable in itself. We saw the movie A Social Dilemma um, talking about how AI has subtly affected our consciousness. Um, to me, smiling business people, everything's doing good, looking good. You want to be a digital knowledge updates, TED Talks, um, empowered culture, feedback culture, um, real-time suggestion box. Where's, where's the rubber hit the road here? Where, where are we making money? We, these are tautologies. Um, so um, moving through this sort of begs the question amongst this crowd, who, what, where is the authentic human being? If a human being exit a college with debt, enters into a city, considers the, the university, the system is rigged, a pay-to-play system anteing up in the, the poker game, what choices do we have for happiness, for love, for stepping outside what Berardi said, the, the semi-capitalism of constant screen culture where we are constantly being not just evaluated but, but um, quantified. We saw that with Zoom culture, the sort of shutdown of response. Um, Berardi said the physical analog body is the the um, juncture in that and must be protected as a, a concrete thing. Um, uh, social workflow, all of these, using your Facebook or LinkedIn things to create um, greater markets, jobs, marketing. Um, how does this uh, contextual Rolodex, these are just such touchy-feely aspects, visual collaboration, um, what I do is the VR stuff, what, how will this really help in terms of UX, UI, um, in all of this, um, haptic robots will let people physically be anywhere in the world, we've already done that. Um, co-creation spaces, we haven't been able to do that with COVID, but in a new way, we have. Um, uh, hypey, techy, techy hypey sort of solutions like a, uh, VR, AR, that are supposed to um, respond to this, um, and all those George Jetson things such as projecting your typewriter on any surface, why would you do that? As I was one of the initial um, reviewers of the iPhone 1, I said, why would want someone want a phone that lasts a total of 
three hours worth of battery. Um, I was wrong. They were going to improve that. Uh, Pop-up workplace. To me, this whole document smacks of inauthenticity. Um, not authentic. Um, uh, saying you will love uh, being second rate. You will love mediocrity. You will love the smoke and mirrors. Um, uh, as if we're infantilized children. You will stand up at your workplace. There will be all these wonderful little um, uh, flock. Uh, you will meet other members in the gig economy and, um, and thrive. Um, so these are larger, larger questions um, in the future of work. Um, so we go on to uh, this lecture on authenticity um, uh, wiki houses perhaps that's a solution um, uh, one of the through lines we have on this is that um, Heidegger state technology and frames it provides a framework for discussion on human being and not does not necessarily talk about itself, technology itself. It's an inframing um, device. Um, uh, we talked about the diet in the city. Certainly this the whole aspect of who we are, what endures in the cities. Jobs don't endure. Relationships don't endure. We often go elsewhere because we're looking for another person. We go elsewhere because we are looking for another self. The authentic self, the happy self, um, what is it? We are asking one person, the intimate, to give us what an entire village once used to provide. So in the city, we see this confluence of the internet. We see money traveling at a high speed. We see indebted students usually coming from outside the city in these research Universities are the classical New England expensive liberal arts college heading right into the city to do what? Asking usually one person, their intimate, to provide what formerly an entire village once asked um, to do. I am pointing toward in this discussion not just authenticity but a way of thinking of permaculture not just the permaculture of gardens or realizing we will not have, as I stated, the petroleum to bring in 10 calories of petroleum it takes to bring in one calorie of food. We have to rethink our food supplies, our water supplies, and so forth. But we also have to rethink our notion of the authentic self, not the empowered self, like some new agey thing, but the authentic uh, individual in the ways that Kierkegaard and um, Nietzsche started to talk about it purposely avoiding systematic methods in talk, uh, talking about they they did hit and run attacks on what the notion of authenticity is to avoid um, being facile so I've assembled a number of, of concerns on permaculture um, and, you know, one of the, the great responses from the mid-19th century, um, Marx, Nietzsche, Kierkegaard, to Freud, turn of the century, to the massive um, wars, collapses, financial collapses, building of war machines, um, using war machines, destroying whole cities, Hiroshima, uh, uh, firebombing of Dresden, um, uh, devastation that these existential philosophers said, what, what choice does an individual have living, captured in these monstrous cities that will devour them, as Marx said, but will also be their death traps, as in the, the destruction of Hiroshima and, and Dresden. What what are they aiming at as free choice, free will? Um, what free will do we have? Um, uh, permaculture is a response in a free will toward the future, realizing 
free will takes place in a timely manner too. We must stave off the bad effects. Um, these are more or less, I love these charts. I pick a subject, I go out, I find these things um, mostly with a sense of irony because they often say what is not the case more than what is. Um, earth care, fair share, people care. As if human beings were 100% virtuous. Um, people have shadow selves. People have desires. People have destructive impulses. Whole societies have destructive impulses as we saw in the capitalist economies of creative destruction. Then leading to um, to war, uh, perpetual war. War is an economic Keynesian uh, response to failing economies. And what I found interesting here in these layouts of, physical layouts of permaculture, we heard from Jerry de Grice in Tasmania that surfaces of houses should be arable vegetation in themselves. Um, we have um, an interesting layout on how the city of the future will have to reflect what it does need to take to bring infrastructure in. How many of those college students who heard you get a higher wage by going to a liberal arts college have to us offset their their debt structure against their real wages and compare that to a plumber or electrician. Um, there a, is a type of um, arrogance toward people who deal with the infrastructure, which is highly spurious, um, but the culture of individuals going to the university just because that's the Kool-Aid to drink um, is evident in this talk about finding authenticity in permaculture. So these are a number of permaculture um, settings, dwelling maps, um, ideas of taking the suburban lawn and turning this into a, as high yield as possible. Um, uh, some of these are beautiful, some of these are quaint, um, some are not tenable to feed a, a family through the winter, but at least the attempt was made to reverse um, the forces of um, suburbanization and over-urbanization that would destroy um, green culture. Um, so these are the permaculture reactions to the authentic self. Um, uh, hog culture, and we'll talk about farming hogs, and then get right back to the existentialists. Um, uh, Heidegger, for Heidegger, in framing, Gestell is a technology to turn nature into a resource for efficient use. Modern technology, says Heidegger, is less, lets us isolate nature and treat it as, as a standing reserve. That is a resource to be stored for later utility. So nature is, which he spoke against because he lived in the woods, um, everything up to this point, uh, when we spoke of being, is in the trap of exploitation, certainly city. Uh, he strongly opposed that technology as a means to end or a human activity these two approaches Heidegger calls respectively instrumental and anthropological definition. We are not indeed correct, but not to go deep enough, he says. We are not yet true. Um, going on. Uh, uh, the Everywhere we remain unfree and chained to technologies, Heidegger's um, initial existential phenomenological approach to very controversial character, of course. Um, if we see technology as an art, we come across a valuable insight. As an art, technology is more of a thing 
out there. It is a relationship as well, an aesthetic and ethical way of relating to nature and society, us. Um, so it, removing, oh, STEM is useful, oh, the efficient city is good in itself. To see the efficient city as Songdo more as a work of art and less as a machine for living is probably the better case in this. Uh, we seek to master technology, essence of modern technology. Um, it is uh, too impatient, violent, urgent. We might note here that it is violence applies as much to the information age as the machine age. Um, uh, where have the wars gone? The wars, by all accounts, from the Iraq War have not disappeared as economic and cultural forms of so-called creative destruction. Uh, further, further, further. Um, interesting use, Heidegger, essence of technology is by no means anything technological, kind of the let x equal x of the justification of the STEM school. But in the beginning I said the individual going to the liberal arts college often they have no idea why they're there except that they got a low interest loan to be there and they heard that they would in the future earn a higher wage than not going. So we, we see uh, an acceptance of these hidden costs and and the collective hallucin is a, a hallucin is a, drinking Kool-Aid um, of a system perpetuated. Um, again, we go back to the metaphor of the city as a monster, as a consuming monster. Um, uh, it is, as a work of art, we need a greater free relationship to technology. Moving onward, and this is his famous book, A Question Concerning Technology and Other Essays. Lewis Mumford Spengler, who gave a more or less uh, anthropological uh, notion. These are extremely conservative individuals, but there is the left-wing analysis of Sartre, Simone de Beauvoir, also acknowledging a free will and aiming at the, uh, the authentic individual. Going onward, um, uh, the, with Marx and Freud, we have the unsystematized people. Um, Kierkegaard, Nietzsche, Dostoevsky talking about authenticity that is often compared to nihilism, often embraced right away by the right wing um, as a system, um, the World War I German soldiers carried, were given a, a copy of the Bible and uh, also Sprach Zarathustra by Nietzsche into the battlefield for the authentic style, self. Very um, interesting. Uh, the, uh, neither, neither Kierkegaard nor Nietzsche had the slightest interest in starting a movement, a system, systematizing, developing a new system, a thought which would indeed have offended them. Both proclaimed in Nietzsche's phrase, follow, follow not me, but you. Follow your authentic self. Um, uh, so moving onward with this, how, how can we be authentic in the city when we have student debt, when money flows in and around everything, when the screens systematize um, the turning of the individual into clicks, therefore commodities. Um, we see it in uh, uh, Instagram culture, which I brought out. Where, how, when, why do we um, uh, use this? Of course, Nietzsche is embraced by the far left and far right with particular slogans such as this democratic institutions form a system of quarantine for tyrannical desires against the bureaucratic state. Um, uh, moving onward, uh, 
into uh, yes, uh, Trotsky, Marx, the practical guys, the guys specifically saying you were exploited by these forms of money and um, uh, just the labor theory of value, what money becomes as a um, an illusion, fiat currency, an illusion of success, the notion you can hoard um, pure exchange value, divorce from use value. Um, many of these 19th century individuals were again seeing shocking exploitation coming out of the, the rather vigorous and barbarous um, quantification of the urban individual, much like today, as 60-70% of populations head into the city to live and to be exploited. Again, we're moving with this notion of the city as a consuming monster, just for the sake of it, as a metaphor, that it is these individuals here were aiming and critiquing, uh, suggesting methods at finding freedom, even when you know or seem to know all the facts, all the forces against. We talked about Freud and civilization and its discontents. Why would we form civilization when the dyad of the two intimates should be something in itself, something enough? Um, Marx, um, uh, value comes from labor, labor theory of value. Um, why would we give it up to places like banks, um, earning a wage, working on um, war production and other sorts of aspects. Jung uh, is talking about a more eternal archetypal response, um, kind of uh, 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 predates uh, ep epigenetics in the sense that we are born passing on our genetics through also our environments um, and what we choices we our ancestors made within our environments. Um, uh, the world itself is the will to power and nothing else. You yourself are the world will to power and nothing else. How to make yourself um, understand why you move through a city and do what you have to do. Simone Weil. Um, um, study of chattel slavery and how chattel slavery has not left and has merely turned into separate forms. Again, this notion that the city is consumer. A film like 2001 A Space Odyssey talks about um, the juncture between this Heideggerian notion of the tools in frame, the, the bone to bash, to kill, um, became the spacecraft, became the HAL, the destroying AI. Um, the, the irony being for the AI um, to protect its mission, it must eliminate futile, inauthentic um, human life forms, um, to put it succinctly. Um, we go into another discussion of these uh, cities, um, how they formed, what is the blood flow, um, uh, and then let's get back to this um, before we're over here. We move from money to debt, to college debt, in the past lecture, you, me, I've paid off my debt, um, but I work. Um, that's something I hope is useful. It's something I hope I retain a degree of critical thinking through representation, reproduction, and legitimacy. Um, uh, often my job is to hopefully show critically to students what is might still be legitimate in a, a gig economy that's a collapsing pyramid while the one percent remain 
suspended wherever Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos goes, you know, on their holidays. Um, what, um, how can we remain authentic in this gig economy? Uh, I want to harken back to the existentialists after the cataclysms of the mid-19th century, the American Civil War being a large factor and in one of the first industrial wars, ostensibly about the elimination of chattel slavery, which in one sense kind of wasn't. It was uh, a number of forces trying to divide the Union, notably England, which was dealing with its colonial expansion. So in a way, the American Civil War was implicitly about further colonialism, an ascendancy toward colonial technology, the use of repeating rifles and, and trains to get large bodies of soldiers. The Europeans stood in awe watching this war as, as trains move troops, massive amounts of troops to fronts to where they are massively killed. Um, uh, the most devastating war in our country's history, ostensibly for the high-minded purpose to eliminate chattel slavery, which only came at the very end of the, of the war. But what is cataclysms mid-century, World War II, um, the final carving up of the English colonialist empire, French English empire, the ascendancy of the Asian states, the foundation of modern, modern China through um, Mao and his takeover, um, the strange aspect of a hyper-capitalist country within a communist monetary infrastructure. What is that? How does it work? What are the algorithms? The underlying concepts of existentialism, not as a romantic form, but basically what happiness or authenticity can we maintain in a city after our indebtedness to what we thought was our original um, entitlements. Um, still continues. Mankind is free will. Life is a series of choices, creating stress. Yes. A few decisions are without any negative consequences. Accepting that. Uh, disturbing trend with social media, texting, so forth, is that people now tend to move as I call them wolf packs, that they socialize and move in these, these systems. Some things are irrational or absurd without explanation. If one makes a decision, he or she must follow through. Um, I continually talked about that with the Greek notion of, of um, chronos and karios. The modern manifestation of that is satisficing and maximizing uh, 1950s sociologists brought that up what we saw kind of on hyperdrive do we continue to maximize our choices on our smartphones or do we satisfy bottom one if one makes a decision he or she must follow through with all of their being um uh Existentialism is uh, something that poses action. Why I'm choosing this as a non-systematized system, um, talking about the authentic ci city. Cities are interlinked. We dealt with the metaphor of cities as monsters, cities as all-consuming, cities as corrosive, cities as a place utopic but also dystopic in the sense it will thrive and it will eat your sense of entitlements. Um, it will cons be consumed by not only your desires but your your righteous sensibility and your entitlements. Entitlement as what? Identity, um, uh, desire, have a shelter, have a family, have a car, have a, uh, a pursuit of happiness like anyone else. Um, focus on issues related to human existence, stresses personal freedom, always freedom. Um, and um, it is different from nihilism, um, 
where there is no value. Um, there might be a fatalism among city dwellers, certainly those subjected to unfair labor practices, um, uh, forms of chattel slavery, um, uh, sex trafficking of younger persons, any persons, uh, the inhumane, corrosive aspects of modern, interlinked, um, semio capitalist, neoliberal capitalists, I'm using those terms very loosely, but a way of quantifying human beings into these categories and thus quantifiable. Um, this is a way out of nihilism that we don't have a choice we must roll over and, and be dead play dead um, uh, so it avoids uh, nihilism um, uh, that is about it for this lecture we are our choices our choices to like on Instagram something sounds facile and banal but a return back to this is part of the interest in the interconnected city of understanding um, how we can be aware of money flows forms of wage slavery indebtedness the disappointment that we are not achieving our entitlements in our lives and maybe construct some form of happiness as agents that we are our choices. Um, Sartre, who died in 1981, um, right in the middle of one of my uh, existential philosophy classes, undergrad. Um, and he's talking about the cataclysms of the Great Depression, spurning, creating the war, global war, war of decolonization, war of fascism over communism, over neoliberal capitalism, um, which led to the Cold War. Um, when the machine gets us down, what do we look for? We are our choices that might be a source of happiness somewhere. His partner, Simone de Beauvoir, did many incredible articulations in her book, The Second Sex, toward um, how women, particularly married women, could start to construct happiness and autonomy out of their personal choices. To be continued soon. Bye-bye.